I had been consuming radical content on YouTube for about six months after the Orlando shooting. I remember I typed that theme into YouTube and was inundated with YouTube videos from Rebel Media and One American News Network type channels uh, and ended up going down that rabbit hole. I ended up becoming a correspondent for Rebel Media of which I obtained millions of views. And my boss always told me, and the bosses of these other organizations always told me that we should never let the truth get in the way of a good story. And if we can hmm. get people angry, and if we can get people upset, that we can make more money, we can make more profit, and we can drive the algorithms to, to keep pushing these videos. It's what made me feel very disenfranchised and end up speaking out about it all in the end. But as someone who really believed in it and believed that you know free speech was under attack and that the West was being invaded and all these ideas that they were pushing, I really felt that if I had to take part in disinformation and take part in bending the truth, that it was for the greater good. But actually, mm. my bosses and the people at the top of this ecosystem, from Newsmax and all these organizations, from Project Veritas, which collaborated with Rebel at the, at the time, it was all fair game because the left were just so terrible. But actually, the kind of tactics that they were engaged in, and even myself now looking back were engaged in, were far worse than the quote-unquote liberal media and CNN and any of these groups ever took part in. It was completely devoid of any realism or any journalism. We would go to quote-unquote no-go zones in 2018 when Fox News would hype up that whole situation. And we would create conflict and then selectively edit it to look like those areas were far more dangerous than they were. Those videos would obtain millions and millions of views. Again, I regret that massively. The only reason mm -hmm. I did it was because I was radicalized by those people and felt like it was for the greater good and it was a bit of a cult. But those people profited massively from it and it was always about pushing disinformation. Alex Jones, who I spent a lot of intimate time with and a lot of the people that employed me, told me openly that they thought the whole Pizzagate stuff and the pedophile stuff and all huh. the stuff that they were pushing is, is something that they don't really care about or really believe in. But it whips up their audience into anger and it gets them to buy products on their news nights or, so or, to, or is, to sign up to their websites. Sorry, you're saying that the hosts are not true believers. They were just doing what worked. And in some extent, the entire formula flows from what we saw from ex-President Trump, you know, create conflict, facts be damned. And that will, it said, uh, create its own ecosystem of outrage that will build a brand. That's extraordinary.